All of us know of the many things that science has done for us. But sometimes we forget that scientists have private lives and private problems, just like the rest of us. In just a moment, we'll join a scientist and his wife in a terrifying situation. Dr. Donald Taylor at his office. You know the way, sir? Yes, I do. Thank you, sir. I'm a little early. Would you be kind enough to call Dr. Taylor to tell him I'm here? Yes, sir. Be glad to. Thanks. Hello, Dr. Taylor. This is Joe down at the main gate. I just admitted to General Winston. He's on his way to your office. Fine. Thank you very much for calling. Who was it, Donald? Huh? Oh, it was Winston. He's on his way to my office. You know, these visitors from Washington, they're always so early. You haven't finished your dinner yet. I haven't finished these reports yet. I'm supposed to talk about these reports tonight, among other things. Do you realize you never eat a full meal anymore? You can't sit down at the table long enough. Meals are the only time I get to see you or talk to you. Oh, you exaggerate. No, I don't. You've gone back to your office every night for nearly two weeks. You don't seem to realize how much you work. I do. Well, we went to a party about a week ago. I remember very well. Three weeks. You spent the entire evening sitting over in a corner with Dr. Burnside and Colonel Price. Might as well have been at your office. All right, I give up. It's so frustrating to discuss things with you, Donald, because you always give up. That's because you're always right. I'll be home early tonight. Will you wait up for me? Does it matter? Well, of course it matters. Please, Anne. I can't leave while you're angry. I'm not angry. Oh, well, that's, that's better. Look, I know it's been rough on you these past few months, but once this project is off the ground... There'll be another. You're angry. Oh, Donald, I don't want to be a nagging wife. You better go to your office. That man's waiting for you. Hello, Walter. It's Anne. I'm sorry to bother you at night, but I had... Well, thank you. I don't really like birthdays anymore, but I, I do appreciate your remembering it. Walter, I was wondering if I could come in and see you at your office tomorrow. Yes, it's about Donald. It's about his separation. I can't go on anymore like this, Walter. I'm, I'm losing my mind. I have tried. You know I have, but he doesn't need me anymore. There's nothing I can contribute. He won't even miss me. Walter, listen, I don't want to talk about it anymore. We've been through this all before, and now I want to do something about it. Now, what time tomorrow? No, no, no lunch. No lunch. I'm coming to you as a lawyer, not as a friend. Right? Two o'clock.
back door was open. Who are you? What do you want? I want to see your husband. He isn't here. Please leave. I have some very important matters to discuss with your husband. I'll wait if you don't mind. I do mind. I don't know you. You'll have to go. I'm sorry. In there, please. Sit down. They pay him well, don't they? I'm prepared to use this, Mrs. Kayla. Sit down, please. Thank you. $17,500 per annum, I think the sour is. Or has he been awarded a raise recently? He's only 38, isn't he? 38 hours in charge of an entire research project in turbodynamics. We anticipated the jet engine by several years. I have a citation from the government. Ask your husband about me. He knows about me. What are you here for? What do you want from Donald? Justice. You believe in justice, don't you, Mrs. Kaler? You believe that a murderer should be punished? Well, I don't see what that has to do with my husband. He's guilty of murder of destroying a man and his work without conscience with one stroke of his red pencil. You certainly can't call that murder. Scientific murder is what I'm calling it. He threw out my blueprints, said my engine was dated, wouldn't even make a model of it. All those years, threw them out. The young genius con that takes out a red pencil and marks it obsolete. Well, that was his job. He had to. You want to know what I did to him? I'll tell you what I did to him. I walked into his office and I threw those blueprints right in his face. All that work right in his face and I walked out. It wasn't until much later that I realized that was exactly what he wanted me to do. I got out of his way. Well, I'm not staying out of his way, Mrs. Kaler. Are you waiting here to... to shoot my husband? Well, what would you do, Mrs. Kaler? He stole my engine. When your husband comes home, get him to tell you the whole story. I'll let him live long enough to tell you. What's your name? Rudolph Miller. Heard that name. Where are you going? What are you going to do? You had an article in the scientific journal. Here, August 1954. Didn't expect to see this here. It's mine. I bought it. I've been studying. So I could talk to my husband intelligently. I bought a lot of old magazines. Studying? I wanted to take an interest in his work. Encourage him. Encourage him. What encouragement does a scientist need? All he wants is to be allowed to work. All he asks... Sit down or I'll shoot you first. Telegram for you, Mrs. Keeler. I was just coming off duty, so I told Gus I'd deliver it. It's a terrible night out, isn't it? Yes, it is, Joe. It's not bad news when they put it in that kind of an envelope. Thank you, Joe. Uh, have you got a minute, Mrs. Keeler? Well, no, I... Dr. Keeler said next time I was stopping by that maybe I could interest you folks in a ticket for the firehouse supper. That's a real nice door prize. It's an automatic dishwasher and there's a... Well, thank you, Joe. We do want some tickets, but I, I haven't been to the bank today. Oh, the firehouse boys will trust you, Mrs. Keeler. Here, all you have to do is put your John Hancock right on that stub. Thank you, Mrs. Kaler. And you can give me the money the next time you come by the gate, huh? Good night. 
don't want to hurt you, but don't you disobey me again. Please. Happy birthday. All our love, Mother, Barbara, and Dad. What happens after you pull the trigger? Have you thought of that? Yes, I've thought of that. Then you'll be the murderer. I'll be right. That's what matters. You're committing suicide. I'm dead already. There's no sense trying to reach you. There's no sense at all. You're absolutely crazy. Oh, dear God. Call your husband right now. Tell him to come home. Tell him you're sick. Call him now! Hello. Hello, Donald. No, ma'am. This is Charlie, the gate man. Donald, I don't feel well, dear. Ma'am, you dialed the wrong extension. This is the main gate. Donald, please listen. It's Anne. I know you're terribly busy, but I'm feeling quite ill. I think you should come home right away. Lady, who is this? Donald, this is Anne. Please put down what you're doing and listen. Now, look, ma'am, I told you once. Donald, I'm sick. Come home. Please come home at once. Lady, if you folks are having a party, and this is one of those parlor games... <laughs> I warned you, and you disobeyed me again. Now I've got to kill you. I've got to. It's nine o'clock. What are we doing here? We came here to visit a friend. Now we're going back. You're lying to me. You and the doctors are always lying to me. You tell me why we're here or I'll call the front office. You're not my nurse. You're somebody else. Who are you? Have it back, please. What? My gun. Now that you've looked at it. Your gun. Yes. It's grim looking, isn't it? Please give it back to me. It makes me nervous when anyone holds it too long. This isn't yours? Dr. Miller, I must insist. This is mine. I bought it from a prisoner of war in 1942. I gave him two packs of cigarettes for it. Why did you say it was yours? Dr. Miller, I want you to leave my house right now! Right now! I have my coat, please. There's a man's coat in the corner. Take that. I'm sorry. I sometimes have slight lapses of memory. Who lives here, please? What's your name? 
My name is Anne. Anne. Yes, Anne Johnson. Johnson? Yes. And your name is Rudolph Miller. And you wanted me to remind you you should be home by eight. It's way past that now. Yes, it is. How long have I been here? fresh out of ice. Can I feel this? I'm Sally Alex from next door. We've got the Andersons in for bridge. It's in the fighting stage already. You know Myrtle. Pick, 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 pick. I just had to get away for a minute. Is Donald working as usual? Sally, listen. Speak up, darling. Sally, I... I never can get these things to... Let me help you. Oh, would you? I'm so useless mechanically. Did you say Donald was working, dear? Yes, I... Isn't it awful? I got one just like him. Is this a mad scientist, too? That's what I call mine, the mad scientist. Darling, what's the matter? Nothing, I... You look positively green. Did I say something? I say things that embarrass everybody. It's absolutely disgusting. Oh, that's enough, thanks. Are you all right, dear? Yes, I'm all right. No, I'm not. Really, I'm feeling a little depressed. I was hoping Brady would drop in. Brady? Yes, I need someone like Brady very much right now. <laughs> you are in a bad way, dear. Brady's our night patrolman. He tells the most ghastly Irish jokes you ever heard. Anyway, thanks for the ice. And happy birthday, dear. Oh, dear. I shouldn't have said that either. Or did Donald remember after all? No. Well, I'll say it anyway. Happy birthday, darling. And good night. It's your birthday. And your husband forgot. Yes. Is that why you want to leave him? I heard you talking to your lawyer. My birthday has nothing to do with it. Is he cruel to you? No. What do you care? Leave me alone. Just leave me alone. Why did you tell me your name was Johnson? Why did you lie to me, Mrs. Kaler? I... Are you married, Dr. Miller? Are you married? No. Well, it's very difficult to be married to a scientist. You can imagine. A scientist is like any man. Oh, no, he isn't. His work is so important to him. A woman can't share that work. Why should she? tried to share it. I simply don't have the intellect. I just can't keep up. What nonsense. Do you think he wants technical discussions when he comes home at night? No, of course not. Do you think he wants an intellectual giantess sitting across the table from him? No, he but He works I... long and hard. When he comes home, he wants someone to comfort him. I want to tell him how wonderful he is, like any man. Yes, well, if he'd tell me that just once, if I knew he needed me. What do you think our work is like with all of its pressures? Day after day, the bitter disappointments and the failures and the... It's a terrible strain. You say a scientist is a man that doesn't need anyone because of his work? Well, you're wrong. It's because of his work that a scientist does need someone very much. He needs someone to come home to. Someone to say foolish things to him, make me laugh. Someone to care about me. Otherwise, what does my work mean? Why am I working? Is this so difficult to understand? Isn't there anyone to take care of you? Don't think I don't know why we're talking. I'm not distracted, Mrs. Kaler. I haven't forgotten why I'm here. Please let me help you, Dr. Miller. I'd like to help you. Please let me call the hospital and get help. Tell me the name of your doctor. I've been discharged from the hospital. That's all over. I'm, I'm as competent as you are. Dr. Miller, let me take you back. My car's in the garage. Oh, please. You think I could leave now? With your husband coming through that door at any minute, you think I could do that? You could if you weren't afraid. Afraid? Yes. Afraid of what? Afraid of being hurt. Afraid that people want to hurt you. No one wants to hurt you, believe me. You don't need to be afraid. I'm not afraid. Stop saying I'm afraid! 
Turn away from the door. Are you afraid of me? Do you want to kill me? doing here in the dark it's all right darling everything's all right dr miller came here to help me i was confused and unhappy i didn't know what to do he's helped me no that's not true he's taught me things he's helped me to understand Things I couldn't see for myself. He doesn't want to harm us anymore. Because now he knows that we don't want to harm him. He's helped us. I promised him that we're going to help him. Of course we'll help him. I appreciate your coming here, Dr. Miller. Dr. Miller is a brilliant scientist, Dan. I know, but he needs our help. So he won't have to be afraid anymore. There is no need to be afraid. Dr. Miller is a scientist. And a scientist is a man who builds, not a man who destroys. His job is very important and terribly, terribly difficult. And we must all help him. Operator, will you give me the county hospital, please? Thank you, Dr. Miller. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, county hospital. Would you please give me the doctor who takes care of Dr. Miller? <laughs> 